when you want to export it, go to File, Export Media. This little window shows up. Now look at this. This is the format, right? Now, this is the final format. H.264 is kind of what you want to do. You want to send it out to the world in this format. You don't want to, you want to work with movie files. You don't want to export in movie files unless you're, if you're sending a file to a friend who's going to work on this too, to QuickTime. So he can work on it as well. H.264 is compressed and so, look how little, six, or what is it, 73 megabytes? So compressed, hard to edit, like super compressed, um, you know, file. So let's take this, take a look. We got we, all these settings. We push this little button here. Look at this, man, you can make your own settings on the top here. You can do all these crazy, look at Facebook and all this stuff, unbelievable, right? Mobile device, uh, 720, if it's a massive, massive file and you want to get it below the threshold, it's like a 10, 15 minute file. That's the only time I recommend that if you wanted that. Uh, 1080 mobile device is great for when pe you think people are going to look at your stuff on the phone. It's kind of cool, right? So, I mean, you have all the, I like to do, let's, for instance, I love this one, mobile device. I think a lot of people are on that mobile device. And look at this, you have all this information here, 1920 by 1080, uh, variable bit rate, one pass uh, target, eight megabytes per second, which I recommend, you know, keeping it there to keep the file size down, which is good. YouTube likes eight to 10, that's their target. Uh, VBR is um, uh, one pass, you can do a two pass if you have a lot of effects and crazy stuff going on and you wanna make sure that each little thing is not missed, it passes it over again and make sure that it uh, renders everything perfectly. So if you have a short clip, not too many tr um, transitions, effects, then you can just do a one pass, which should do it. If you scroll down here, you have these little tabs. You have audio, you can do um, MPEG if you wanted to, you can do different audio out if you wanted to. You can do a sample for a sample rate. It's what it is basically is the same, I'd keep it the same. Um, multiplexer. Look at this MP4, you can do different settings in here, stream compatibly, interesting. You can do iPod back in the day, remember those? <laughs> publish, yeah, you can publish a direct, um, this goes back to Adobe it looks like, you can publish to them if your account is set up, if your Facebook account is set up, you can put your stuff in there, which is kinda cool, sign in. Uh, but I mean, I love to do just video, right? Go down, make sure the square it's square pixels, which is what I love. Frame rate is 24, that's correct. Uh, render at maximum depth, you could. I mean, if you want it to be like super, if you have a, uh, different blacks and different whites and it's super, if you really think that's important, you can. I mean, I do not always use that, but uh, performance hardware encoding, that's what I want you to use. Profile main, yep, yep, yep. And look at this, master display color volume. Um, it's grayed out because you can't change it at this point. It's just telling you what's going on. And here you go, your, uh, this is important, bitrate settings. Say for instance, this is, um, you don't have to send it to YouTube or Facebook, you're sending it to like a client and you want it to be super sharp on your it's on their screen and they're just gonna play it right from the USB. Then you can bring this out, you can bring this up. <laughs> the more you bring this up, the super, super duper sharper it gets. Uh, you can't really notice too much of a difference. Um, you really, I mean, if, if you do on large screens, yes. If you have a massive screen and you're, you're way down here, yes, you will see like, oh, it's not as super, super pixelated. But eight is fine, so just type eight. So that's for YouTube, enter, all right. And look at this, advanced settings, you can do keyframe distance, uh, VR video, wow, pretty exciting. Uh, you know, you can do, Max, use rent a maximum render quality if you want, just to see a super quality. There you go. Um, I think that doesn't change the uh, the size of it, which is nice. And then you can also, when you have your captions, if you did create crap captions, <laughs> captions. <laughs> so well, captions is another is another lesson. That's we'll we'll work on that some other time. But you can see you have your Lumetri. Everything's um, look at this. You can apply which which one you want, and if you hit this, the whole thing changes towards that. So you can, at the very end, apply some sort of cool look. Look at this. All these clean, straight, out, you know, cross. I'm not gonna do it, but I'm just telling you, if you did click something like that and you wanted to, a, a, a LUT is a lookup table, basically. It's a pre-created uh, 
setting. Image overlay, did you want to put some sort of image on it, like as a logo? It's kind of neat, right? So you have tons of names. You want to put your name, minister or something, and it shows up all the time, like every time. Look at that sequence. It says sequence because um, you can type a different thing if you wanted to, but kind of nice. If you're sending this to like uh, you're working with people and you're, you're letting them know that it's sequence one, you know, when you're working with people, this is very important when you're going back and forth. But for now, we'll just turn it off. Time code overlay let you know exactly when like they could your, your client could be like well at 5008 uh i didn't like this part and they're like oh okay well i know exactly what he meant because i put the time code there you do that for your clients so and that's kind of cool and it will change look at that it changes well i'll tell you what at this scene i didn't like this you know like they can tell you a million things and it's great to have a time code when you're working with clients so that's cool so don't forget this cool stuff look at time tuner uh, there's different ways to change the time code. So, um, and let's see, video limiter, a clip level, all sorts of fun stuff here. Loudness normalizer. So make sure it's not like the target. The the audio will be a certain loudness. You can change that if you wanted to. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. I mean, look at all these settings, but. For the most part, what you will do in your real world is just go to here and you can just Facebook, okay, thank you. It'll make everything the way it's supposed to do. Push. Uh, you can do either export, which will do right away, or Q. Say you do Q, for instance, and you downloaded the media encoder, which allows you to Q multiple things. I just wanted to touch base on this one real quick. And this is media encoder. Now, what, when would you use this? Like, say you had to do multiple files, multiple projects. Facebook, you want to do Instagram, you, to, you did a rectangle or you did a square one. Uh, you can change the, uh, the, uh, the sequence settings and you had different ones to send out. That, then you would use the media encoder and it comes with basically for free um, Premiere Pro. You can go to the Adobe Cloud and download it for free. It should be free for you because it's supposed to be Adobe's best buddy. If you look at this, you can see it's loading for the first time because I just updated it recently, so it's probably going to be slower than it should be. Here is the media encoder. There's in blue is uh, this is this is the taking on a previous project. So you're going to click this little thing and you're going to name it. You're going to name it where you want it to go. Um, for me, I always I always make sure that I push um, CSS Premiere Pro. I always, I'll go back one. I always do exports. Ready? New folder, exports. And then here, exports, you can name your project. Whatever your project is, we're going to say uh, all in one version, whatever it was. Okay, zero point, what did it say? Five or six, or we got up to six. And then say final, FNL, final. Then push OK or save. And then here, you can always change if you wanted to. Um, a different, if you're like, oh wait, I don't want to do that, you can go back and change it, but we're not going to do that. File, and then export media, and uh, say for instance we did it, we're not going to do it because I don't want to, you know, take forever, but we've got to go back again, saving it. All right. There it is, exports, right? And it's not there, you don't see it, but we could just say uh, Instagram. Right, Instagram, and then you would put your, for for instance, all in one, now six Instagram, and we had already made it, you know, square, and then we could say Q, and watch what happens. That both there. Then when you push play, it's just play. It just renders them out and then sends them to wherever you told them to go. And you don't. You can just push play, and then you can go walk. This is going to take a couple seconds, but say you have like five or six or seven, you can push the button and go leave, and then come back and say, "Oh, they're all done." And that is how to export. Once you do that, you have your project into the world. And congratulations on finishing the the whole course. Um, I hope you loved it. I hope you enjoyed it. It was fun for me. I, and I hope to see your videos out in the world and you can be like, hey, that, that guy helped me out, get me started. That would be like the, mean the world to me that I had helped you get started in creating your videos into the world.